series. How are you feeling? Are you still excited? I mean, how much, how about that game? And you know what? If the Astros had to play game seven, they would probably be without Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman because they both had injuries in game six. So good thing they won. The Astros are world champs and Brett and I are back together again. And we'll discuss it on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H. Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Positive. I love being world champions. Always Stros. All right, guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen after every World Series game, after every ALCS game, after a- every L- ALDS game, after every regular season game. And we will be continuing on during the offseason. We'll be talking about what happens with James Click, what happens with Dusty Baker, uh, what are we going to do about Justin Verlander. Who are we going to sign at first base? There's so much for us to discuss. So make sure you you subscribe to the Locked on Astros podcast. We are not just here during a regular season. We are here year round, baby. And make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Check us out. So, Brett, um, I know that there's a big event that's been scheduled in downtown mm-hmm. Houston. Um, I think that a lot of people are probably going. I know HISD closed their schools, and I know that some people are saying, well, is that really smart? Because not everybody's going to be going to the World Series parade, so you're going to have a lot of unsupervised kids at home. <laughs> but I know my district and my kids' district, they're, they're not closing schools. But what they're doing is if you go to the World Series parade, then you can go ahead and be excused. So you know what that means? A lot of people are going to be like, uh, yeah, I went to the World Series parade. Wink, wink. And that, that just a way to get out of school. But guys, World Series parades are awesome. I wish I can go, but I'm still recovering from the surgery. But I know you're going tomorrow, Brett, right? Yeah, exactly. My son and I are going. And we I still haven't figured out exactly when we're going but i'm probably not driving down there probably getting there through public transit you know just by by way of metro and gonna try to figure out the best place to park ourselves because we're gonna be there for a while the only drawback to not taking a vehicle is you have to have lawn chairs or somewhere to sit or you'll be sitting on the concrete for several hours but right here eric um, i've got this map and if y'all are watching this if you're listening obviously you can't see the map you can go to um, I believe the city of Houston, I know their their Twitter page has it, the Chronicle, but it's literally this parade route is a three mile stretch and it starts at Preston and Smith and it ends at um, Talm and Smith, basically going the full length of that stretch. And I think where it ends is where City Hall is. Mm-hmm. And so um, it will end with the parade um the guys in the parade, the team, the entertainers, whoever's there will get off the bus. They will go up. They'll have a stage. They'll have the trophy there. They'll say something. Each player will probably give a little speech. You know, you might hear the Chaz chomp going, things like that. And so it's going to be a fun time. There's going to be a lot of people down there. It's not going to be cool. It's going to be hot. So like the city said, make sure you hydrate. Um, I'm thinking of parking ourselves near a restaurant so that when one of us gets hungry, we can go in and grab something to eat so we don't have to worry about bringing extra food with us. But that will just be something that we have to navigate. So if you go down there, be safe. Um, Please do not drink and drive. I mean, man, Eric, after game, after the game ended last night, we were going back to the vehicle. It was like World War Z meets Fast and Furious. But there was no violence. It was just chaos. It was people climbing on on streetlight poles. It was people peeling out their tires. 
Um, it was actually a really friendly atmosphere. It was just crazy. It was insane. You would have thought that we had never seen a title before, but I heard it was even cooler than when we won in 17. Uh, yeah. And I, I remember being there when, uh, in 2017 and it was just chaos. Um, may I wasn't there when they, they actually won the world series, but I was there for one of the games and I remember it was chaos getting back. And I know that you had troubles, uh, getting back. It took you what, two hours to get home just because all the chaos, that's why you had to go late that day. But, uh, it's still the world series. Everybody was having fun. Everybody was taking a party into the street. So, I really wish I could have been there, but um, it was just a great game overall. I know that you and I both had our separate podcast yesterday, but I'm sure we both said the same thing. Uh, before the game, Mart the idea that Martin Maldonado was dealing with a broken hand came up, and after the game, we did find out that that was true. And the fact that he was dealing this since, uh, I think it was August 18th when he got hit by a pitch. And so he's been dealing with that. He also has to have a... Uh, sports hernia surgery because that's something he's been dealing with and then during yesterday's game you had Alex Bregman who slashed um, 294 379 569 in 11 postseason games with three home runs and 11 RBIs um, he said that uh, when he slid into the base he was called out but what happened was his finger his pointer finger kind of got pushed back right and you can kind of see that and um even during the replay, you can tell that that hurt. And after a game, he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's broken. I can't move it. And so, um, but so he did break it and, uh, they did confirm it. No surgery. He just has to be in cast for eight weeks or so. So he should be ready for spring training. So that's the good news on the Alex Bregman front. And then you also have, uh, the news that, I mean, I have, haven't seen it officially, but there were some reports that, uh, that Altuve was dealing with a little hamstring injury after the game. So, yeah. So, um, when he got his double, um, Ben, I mean, Ben DeBose wrote about it and he, you know, he writes legitimate articles. He's not a tabloid guy. So he basically said that they would have been without Bregman, Yuli, obviously, and Altuve if they would have gone to game seven. So it's, it's a good thing that the Houston Astros did wrap things up. Um, in, um, in game six, I, I, I don't think it would have been good for the Phillies to go to game seven. I think they would have lost anyways. But I loved how <laughs> Kyle Schwarber either betted the under in Vegas, and that's why he bunted on a on a on a two strike count, yeah. or he just gave up. I mean, that was I have never seen a player like Kyle Schwarber sailing in like he did at that at bat. We were shocked. Like like the amount of shock in the stadium and the conversation was, wait, we didn't even realize there were two strikes when he bunted, right? And like he bunted and like everybody started walking up the field. We were like, why are they walking? Up? Oh, that was the third strike. It was just, um, you know, the Phillies, the Phillies didn't show up and that, that pitching change really affected them. And Jordan Alvarez took advantage of that. I mean, that was a meatball and, um, the Astros looked really good in this win. The Astros looked good in this series, Eric. They looked dominating, and it looks like there's going to be no quit in this team. There's going to be no give up, and I expect them to be in the same position next year. I mean, honestly, they're they're my early, early, way too early favorite to to win the AL and to be back in the World Series next year. I don't know who else holds a candle to them. Well, I think it depends on who the Astros go out and replace. Like if you Yuli leaves, um, who you could put at first base? Is it Mancini? Are they could pick up his option? Are you going to go out and get a Josh Bell? Um, uh, Rizzo just declared free agency because I think he's tired of the Yankees crap out there. So he wants to be out. Um, so it, it, I think there's a lot that depends on that. But yes, the Astros have the great nucleus. They have the great pitching staff. And even if Justin Verlander decides not to come back, you don't really need him because you I mean, yes, you need him. But if you don't, if you lose him, just like what happened to Carlos Correa, we needed him. But Jeremy Pena just stepped right up. And I think Hunter Brown can step right up for uh, for Verlander in that situation. And uh, speaking of which, let's uh, talking. Uh, you're talking about betting about the future. Let's talk about bet online and what their the odds probably are for the 2023 World Series. 
<laughs> well, I haven't looked into that yet, but I can promise you that they are your number one source for football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. I'm telling you, Bet Online is where it's at, and Bet Online is where the game starts. All right. Um, I know that uh, I talked about it on my podcast yesterday. I don't know if you caught it, Brett, but the Phillies struck out a uh, World Series record time 71 uh, times in this World Series. The previous high was the 2020 Rays. They struck out 70 times. And uh, then the uh, also the 2001 Diamondbacks struck out 70 times. So as good as the Phillies were, they only really were good in a couple of games. They they really figured out Justin Verlander early and then a little bit late. And then they also figured out Lance McCullers. But other than that, they didn't really do much against the um, Astros, especially the bullpen. And the Astros bullpen allowed a 0.83 ERA in the postseason. It's the lowest ever in a uh, from a team in a, in a postseason. So definitely this team was great. It had 11 and two record in the playoffs. Uh, the 1998 Yankees have a, had 11 and two record. The best technically was 2005 White Sox. Boo. They had 11 and one record and mm-hmm. the 1999 Yankees had 11 and one record as well. So uh, those are the ones that kind of beat us with the full uh, series, so to speak. So, uh, but overall the Astros did a great job. They did a great job. I mean, you know, what's funny is mentioning, obviously, it goes without saying, the record of strikeouts for the Phillies was a record strikeouts in the World Series as well. Um, If you watch the post-game interviews with Bregman, with Verlander, with Altuve, this is a ball club, Eric, that from day one they expected to win the World Series. And I know every club says that, but they believed it. And they played with a chip on their shoulder. It was truly, they really embraced fully. And I know it had come to us before the H-Town versus everyone when Correa was here. But this is the year that they got to really put their stamp on everything because all the pieces fell into place. And when I hear Justin Verlander talk about how he got a new lease on life, how his perspective changed, how he just felt like, he said, it's not that I ever took it for granted, but I just learned to appreciate it all the more. And then you have guys like Pena, who's a Jose Altuve said, I said he was going to be a superstar, but did anyone really project how great this kid would be? Eric, this kid has taken on a team role that not many ever have been able to take on like replacing a platinum glove winner, a perennial all-star, one of the best shortstops of his time and not just does great in the regular season, but finds that clutch gene because you and I were talking. The biggest part, I think, of missing Correa will be when we get to the playoffs and we won't have that clutch bat. He's that guy, ALCS MVP, World Series MVP. Carlos Correa never won an ALCS and World Series MVP in the same year. You know what I'm saying? And this kid is here. He's arrived. He's humble. He's a hard worker. Um, just listening to the players, Ryan Stanek, even though he wasn't used that much, just talked about how much they grinded, how much it meant. And Eric being there and listening to Dusty Baker and watch him just have an absolute blast, like a 12 year old kid. I mean, I can imagine he felt as young as he did when he was on deck, when Hank Aaron broke his record. I don't know if you know this, but because he was such a good player, really young, he batted behind Hank Aaron because he provided protection for Hank Aaron because they knew if Hank Aaron got on base that they would have to face Dusty Baker. He was a very good hitter, a young hitter at that. And just for him to come from that point to this point, to prove his doubters wrong and to finally get that World Series title, it is. there's just nothing more satisfying. This whole group from the top to the bottom, Eric, the guys that only had one at bat or one game, 
to the guys that didn't even pitch much in the postseason, to Brian Abreu. I mean, there's so many things we need to break down in this offseason that I think are keys to this World Series victory. Yeah, I'm actually going to write something for Gallery Sports, and it's going to be about the bullpen. It's going to focus a lot on what they did in the playoffs. And a lot of it's going to focus on uh, Ryan, uh, like um, Rafael Montero because he is a free agent, and you also have Michael Brantley, Ledmus Diaz, Jason Castro, Yuli Gurriel, and Christian Vasquez are all the technical free agents. You can also have Trey Mancini. Uh, if they they mutually agree to opt out, and then you, you can also have Will Smith, also, and then you can also have Justin Verlander if they decide to if he decides to opt out to for more money there. But I, I would say of those guys that you're going to bring back, um, I I would say that Rafael Montero has got to be one of the big big guys you target because he was the big part of the Astros bullpen and the, he was the one that Dusty Baker seemed to trusted. And um, then I'm sure you can bring back Michael Brantley. I don't know if you read it, but uh, he was actually a big verbal uh, leader during the, uh, the world series. He was like, no, he was getting in people's faces and say, no, we're going to do this. We can do this. And so that shows me that he's interested in staying. And so maybe he'll take a reduced, um, Salary coming off an of injury to stay with the Houston Astros. Yuli, I I don't know if he'll take. I mean, he's already taken a reduced contract to stay with the Astros. Would he continue to do that? Maybe. So we'll see what happens there. But Christian Vasquez, I don't know what the deal is with hit here. But did you hear that the Astros? And I actually um, knew this, but the Astros had a deal in place back at the trade deadline for Wilson Contreras. And the both GMs had agreed to uh, it was Wilson Contreras for uh, Jose Arquiti, and both teams had agreed to it, and it just went up to Jim Crane, and so Jim Crane uh, decided to go ask Dusty Baker, and Dusty Baker was like, "No, uh, we don't want, uh, we don't think he's going to get a lot of playing time, and we don't want somebody who's going to uh, complain about playing time and." Uh, he just said, we don't think he, Baker just felt like he wouldn't be a good fit on this team. And so that's why the Astros did not trade for, oh, he also said that Jose Arquiti was a great pitcher at that time and they couldn't afford to lose him. So, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I just think, you know, the writing was on the wall. He's in a contract year, like he said, and he's not going to play everywhere. I mean, look at Vasquez. He did not play every game. But um, I want to I want to go back to the first thing you were talking about with Rafael Montero, because I think you could sign him, um, and it won't cost you an arm and a leg. His market value on Spotrack is eight point one million. He made two point seven this last year, and so I really think that Rafael Montero is a realistic um, target for this team. It fits well within their budget. The big question is Kyle Tucker. Are they going to extend him? Before And y'all are asking in the chat about first baseman. Y'all are mentioning Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo could be a target. Mancini, I just don't – I don't see Mancini coming back. Um, I don't see Vasquez coming back. Vasquez wants to be a starting catcher. I would be shocked if he didn't go back to Boston, if I'm being real honest. Um, but Vasquez just doesn't, to me, fit in this roster for next year. I know he had a big knock there late, but – I just unless you're playing him every day, Eric, I don't I don't see him in a Nationals uniform. Um, Michael Brantley, I think, comes back under a reduced salary and a reduced role. I think they platoon him in left field, DH him, flip and flop him with uh, Jordan Alvarez. What I would do personally is I would tell Brantley, look, let's get you at least 135 games. We'll we'll reduce you about 25 games this season. We'll spread that out throughout the year. That way we can ensure you're healthy. You don't have any knee issues, shoulder issues, or whatever may come up. And that way in the playoffs, you can help us. Because now at the end of the day, they didn't need his bat. But if you have Michael Brantley as a viable option in the playoffs, that's always something that's a positive. And to me, he settled in. He is a guy that likes comfort. He likes the clubhouse culture. There's no reason for Michael Brantley to play anywhere else. And while we're on it, there's no reason for Justin Verlander to go anywhere else. There's none. No reason at all. This team is set up nicely. The ball is on the tee. 
And we're not even playing from the pro tees. We're playing from the junior league tees. This team can absolutely crush their goal and get back into the World Series. And I don't even think they need to do much with this roster. You got to find a first baseman. You got to decide what you're going to do with Yuli. Um, the catching position after Maldi, you wonder if is it is it Corey Lee? Is it going to be his time? Um, there are questions that we do need to answer. But look, after five days is up, they are able to talk to free agents. There's a five day grace period after the final game of the season. So when that grace period's up, you're gonna the hot the hot stove is gonna start, and then December we have the winter meetings. Before that, we have the GM meetings. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on between now and the end of the year. I think they can uh, talk to their own free agents. I, I think they could do that because um, we saw Diaz uh, with the Mets uh, go ahead and ex- um, sign a, a deal, and it was a one hundred and two million dollar deal. So. I think you can talk to your own players, but um, to show what the Astros have lost, we've seen Astros lose players like George Bringer, Dallas Keuchel, Carlos Correa. And I saw this tweet earlier. Um, Somebody said that the Astros just keep, they don't, um, they don't, uh, they don't rebuild, they reload. And so in 2014, you brought in Springer. In 2015, you brought in Correa. 2016, you brought in Bregman. In 2017, you brought in Gurriel. In 2018, you brought in Tucker. In 2019, you brought in Alvarez. In 2020, you brought in Javier. In 2021, you brought in Garcia. And in 2022, you brought in Jeremy Pena. Those are all impact rookies that have turned into valuable pieces for Houston Astros. Yes, the the first two are gone in Springer and Correa, but that just shows that they, they have found a way to constantly rebuild from within and build this team from um, from the farm system. Yes, it may not be the sexiest farm system at times, but it gets the job done. And uh, this is four out of six years that they've been to the World Series. Now two out of six years that they actually won the World Series. Uh, somebody asked on the show, can we call this a dynasty? I know Richard Justice over at uh, Gallery Sports wrote about it. He said, yeah, this is a uh, this is a dynasty. This is something that you don't often see this type of domination from one team. And they continue to do so. And that they had a different manager, a different GM. But the problem is this time, how do you not bring back the manager that just won you the World Series? And how do you not bring back the GM that just helped you get the bullpen pieces and get the players you needed to win a World Series? So, Eric, let me ask you, did you see Adam Clanton's post-World Series victory video? You know how he makes the little um, yeah. montages? Did you see the Good Morning Houston where the players were saying, Good Morning Houston, we're world champions? And at the very end of the video, he kind of faded to black after James Click, and it was Jeff Lunau, and he's like, Good Morning Houston, and behind Lunau was the 2017 World Series painting. <laughs> It's just like, I love that, you know, because Lunau's fingerprints are still this, this really, this team is a lot, has a lot to do with what Lunau put together. His fingerprints are still on this, but James Click has not done anything bad or wrong. I don't think I, I don't, I don't know where all the scrutiny for James Click comes from because look at where the team is. Dusty Baker, why not bring him back? Now, the comments after the game from his wife made it sound like she wanted his butt to come back home. She's tired of him being gone, and she's seen – she's like, baseball nearly killed my husband. I want him to come home now that he won. And so you've got some family decisions to be made there with Dusty Baker. I think he comes back for at least one more year. I think James Click stays because who are you going to go out there and get that's going to be an upgrade? Um, unless there's a major leadership clash with that's what I've heard from different people here and there. Not that's not sources, but that's kind of the rumblings. And I don't know if those are assumptions, but I've heard where James Click and and um, James Click and um, Jim Crane are both you know very. Uh, it's not that they don't get along. Well, it's, they have different it's philosophies. That, okay, different philosophies. So yeah. that that may be causing some strain in the relationship. But I want to address this dynasty thing because this is absolutely dynasty. If you look into the I have the Yankees from thirty eight to thirty nine, 
that was one of the most dominant teams of all time. And this team is the only team that rivals that with the amount of times they've been to the fall classic with the ALCS, with the division titles and all the wins. This team, Eric is a dynasty. We are here. The Astros are going to be the favorites going into next season, but next season will be tougher than this season because the chip of your shoulder chip on your shoulder is gone a little bit. Um, the newness is kind of wearing off like you finally did it without the 2017 stuff. Now everybody's really gunning for you. But yeah. no team knows that more than this team. And this team's not going to take it for granted. And that's what I love about it. Well, if you look at uh, the best five-year winning percentages, the Astros are actually fourth. Uh, the 2018 to 2022 Dodgers have a 646 winning percentage. The 1995 to 98 Braves, they had a 626 winning percentage. The Big Red Machine, 1972 to 1976 Reds, they had a 626 winning percentage. And the Astros from 2018 to 2022 have a 621 winning percentage. So they have the fourth best winning percentage. And even the Yankees, the, the great Yankees era of 1998 to 2002, it was just 617. So the Astros are doing what a lot of teams cannot do. And yes, the Dodgers, they, they tend to choke in the playoffs unless it's a Mickey Mouse season. But still, um, uh, they, they still ha- they've they still had a good regular season team. And so uh, the Braves in the 90s, that was a great dynasty there. And what the Reds were doing was a dynasty. So, yes, the Astros are a dynasty now. But can we call the Braves a dynasty? They only won one World Series, Eric. They oh. won they won no, nine no. they won nine division titles. But did, well, actually, there was one season that wasn't even a season, so they didn't didn't win nine straight. Um, I I don't I don't think that team's a dynasty. I, I just now the, it was it was it was a dynasty esque run because of their dominance in the National League. But to only win one World Series with that pitching staff, to fail at that, like if the Astros had failed with this pitching staff, with this relief pitchers, with this lineup, it would have been an absolute failure, Eric. It would have been, it would have been burn it to the ground because this doesn't work. Like seriously, it, it, that would have been catastrophic for this team. Now they would have come back and been competitive, but this team squarely was the expected favorite. And someone asked me today, I was on the Pesky Report podcast earlier, and they asked me, who do I who do I hate more, the Yankees or the Dodgers? And I simply said, I, I have a hard time hating teams that we dominate in the playoffs <laughs> because they haven't beat us. The Dodgers haven't beat us. The Yankees haven't beat us. And I stand by it. The A in American League stands for Astros. And you know how all these teams were like, you know, Houston, we are a problem. No, Major League Baseball, we are the problem. And we are on the throne, and our reign is not ending anytime soon. Yeah, and um, one thing that uh, Dusty Baker did do wrong before Game 6 is he made a comment, and it kind of irked some of the players, but I'm sure they forgot about it after the World Series win. But he said it would be a whole lot easier if we had a Bryce Harper-type DH. And, Who said that? Uh, uh, Dusty Baker. Hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I would understand that. And I that goes back to, well, if you would have done the Wilson Contreras trade, you would have had a better DH in the situation. But at the time, D- Dusty Baker just was like, no, I don't. I- I've heard he's a problem. We don't need any problems on this team. And so I think that it was uh, a click wanted one thing. Dusty Baker wanted something else, and Dusty Baker has the ear of Jim Crane. That's just what I'm thinking. I don't know that for a fact, but it would have been a lot easier with Wilson Contreras' bat in the lineup. Yeah, but he, but again, I don't, he wouldn't have fit on this team because he wants to be an everyday guy because he's vying for a contract. He's in a contract year, and Dusty knew that he wasn't going to get that. I mean, look at Vasquez. Look at look at how much better of a bat Vasquez is. And now that we find out, Eric, that our team had not a broken hand, don't you think the team knew that? The team absolutely knew yeah. that he was playing with the broken hand, and they were still starting him a majority of the time. 
And so it is definitely um, good for them. Good for them not getting Contreras because there were a lot of people talking about that. I think that was a good move on their part. Yeah, and um, some somebody, some people are asking about when did Dusty Baker actually say that? He said that before the game when he was talking about um, he was talking about having Christian uh, Vasquez um, uh, being the DH. And so this is what he said. It would be a whole lot easier if I had a Bright, Bryce Harper type DH. But Christian Vasquez actually played really good in that role in that game because he had some good at bats. Uh, he had one hit. He had a sacrifice fly from what I remember. And so I think that uh, if they maybe would have had uh, Corey Lee up earlier, you could have maybe had Vasquez as the DH every day instead of playing the Mancini and – Alemis Diaz, which unfortunately did not do anything for the Astros. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I really thought that he was going to have some key hits in the playoffs because he had heated up after the All-Star break hitting 315. That, to me, seemed like a viable thing and a possibility, and obviously it wasn't. Um, people keep mentioning this in the, in the uh, chat, so I'm going to address it. They're going to extend Pena, but not but not this early. Um, he's too early into his contract. Um, he is right. He is the same age as Jordan Alvarez, but I think you give him another year, um, let him develop even more. Because believe it or not, the kid can still improve. He's not the kind of player that's satisfied with where he is, and he's going to keep getting better and better. Um, so when the time is right to extend Pena, they will do that. Um, I think Kyle Tucker is the next big name that they talk about extending um, and getting him before he is up for free agency, which I believe is in a couple seasons. Um, but Kyle Tucker is definitely a top priority to keep in house. Kyle Tucker won a gold glove, Eric. Kyle Tucker hit more, got more, more RBIs off of left handed pitchers in 2022 than anybody, than any left hander. This kid can rake. And you know what? They're banning next year. They're banning the shift. The right. shift is gone. No more Jose Altuve in right field. No more Gene Segura in right field. And I think that this is going to improve a lot of hitters' averages. And you know who said on the Astros that is good with banning the shift? Justin Verlander. Justin Verlander is glad that this shift is being banned. So Justin Verlander and Asha Wheelhouse are on the same page when it comes to banning the shift because I hate it. I get playing the averages. I just put put yourself where you're supposed to be. Let's play baseball the way it's supposed to be played. The pitcher's got to make adjustments now. All right, so a lot of people are asking about Justin Verlander. What type of deal is he going to get to close out the show? We don't really know at this point, but uh, he's definitely going to want to get more than the $25 million he's got for the player option for this year. He's going to want something uh, more years and a little bit longer. Would he get something like the Max Scherzer deal, with which was three year, $130 million? I don't know if he'll get that much. That's a little bit excessive. But um, I definitely he's going to be looking to get more per year. But um, when Jim Crane is involved, I think that him and Justin Verlander have a very good relationship. And so I think that there's always a chance that Verlander can be re-signed with the Houston Astros. But at the same time, I think he's, after missing the two seasons, after uh, not fulfilling the $66 million contract, he came back and helped the Astros win the World Series. I think he may feel that the, the, what he owed Houston may, be, may have been repaid. And so, uh, oh, by the way, uh, did you see Kate Upton's answer? Somebody asked him, ask her like after the game, well, what does it mean for Justin Verlander to get the, his first World Series win? And she said something like, well, uh, it, it's I can't answer for him, but um, I think it's great. But he's such an effing legend. It, it shouldn't matter or something like that. And oh, yeah. <laughs> and she oh, yeah. Started no, giggling. She's... It was hilarious. No, yeah, I I love I love the relationship those two have, and it was it was on full display when they were both interviewed by the MLB Network staff after the game. You know, uh, Justin Verlander had his stogie there, and him and Kate were going back and forth, and she was talking about how you know my my love language is sarcasm and you know banter and going back and forth, and so that was really neat to see that. But Eric, I really think that that they get Justin. 
on a two-year deal with a third-year option. I, I just don't know how much longer he can pitch. I know he's got a new elbow. He is 54 wins away, so I think he's going to want to try to stay in the league long enough to get to the 300-win mark because he will be, if he makes it, Eric, I think he's going to be the last pitcher that we ever see get to 300 games. I think it's doable. Um, I think Jim Crane is shrewd enough to be able to get 30 million, no more than 33. I don't, I don't see them paying him more than 33 million a year. I wouldn't mind a two year, $62 million deal for Justin Verlander with the third year option, considering he hits certain marks and he's at certain health, um, you know, barometers at that point. Justin Verlander, I don't see why he goes anywhere else. He's planted his family here. He loves it here. Um, you know, meeting his parents this this past week. They live in Virginia. They come down here. They go see Ben. Someone said, well, he's going out west. Well, if he goes out west, he's even further away from his parents. He's a big family guy now. I see Justin Verlander driving his Ford truck around Houston, Texas for the next two or three seasons. And I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, so um, we know that the Astros won a World Series. We know that's that's not going to end all the – well, you cheated in 2017, but it just shows that the Astros have the talent to w- win, and they the continuous um, going to the World Series, that should have showed it as well. But uh, we'll, we'll address this a little bit later in the offseason, but for right now – the Astros won. It's good that they won in Game Six because if Game Seven you would have been out uh, without Altuve, Bregman, um, maybe Malnado couldn't have played. Who knows? But um, uh, it's just really good to see that the Astros took care of business from Rivaldez. There's a, every case that he probably should have been the MVP of the World Series because he pitched two great games, but. The Astros just dominated the Phillies outside of those two games where the Phillies dominated the Astros. It was just a great series. And um, that's all I got. Brett, you want to close this out? Yeah, close this out because I didn't mention this during the show. Ryan Presley should have been co-MVP. Ryan Presley is this team's lockdown closer. Guys, he's an elite closer. He is all a bit the one of the most dominating closers in MLB playoff history. And he continues to get better. I can't wait to see him come out on the mound at Minute Maid Park to Johnny Cash and the flashing LEDs and the absolute adrenaline rush it is to watch him hit that mound. So for the 2022 World Series champion Locked On Astros podcast, I'm H. Town Wheelhouse. He's Eric Heisman. Thank you all for tuning in this week. We're going to have some guests. We're going to talk to some people throughout the offseason. So stay tuned in and stay locked in to Locked On, where your team every day. Go Strokes.